This was proper, proper, proper weird, and I'm only reminded because the organization did so well on the weekend at this PFL versus Bellator thing. So, I was fighting in Bellator, going to the ceremonial weigh-in, to weigh in 25 pounds above my natural weight class to fight a fat car salesman. And then Mike Mazzulli, this commissioner for the Mohegan tribe, was so, so bizarre. It's, it, it's weird what he rants about. It's unintelligible. He brings us all here to tell us how weight cutting is really bad. I'm like, haven't you seen the sport? People who cut weight and put weight back on generally win. His reasoning for why you shouldn't cut weight, his golden example of who is the healthy guy you should watch and he's fighting old because he doesn't cut any weight, was Josh Barnett. Josh Barnett was fighting other really old people in Bellator and he tested positive more times than Final Fantasy games have been released. That's not the best example of why you should never cut weight. Another big dumbfounding bit of advice he gave was he was getting annoyed that people were rehydrating themselves. These professional athletes in prime condition were rehydrating themselves with electrolyte drinks. He was saying, bear in mind Mike Mazzulli's built like the Michelin man. He was saying, you shouldn't, you shouldn't rehydrate with electrolyte drinks. With all the electrolytes your body's lost and what you need. He was saying, stuffed pretzels. These professional athletes in their peak shape need stuffed pretzels to rehydrate from horrendous weight cuts so he's basically saying don't cut any weight josh barnett is peak male performance and if you do cut weight rehydrate with stuffed pretzels did he do it well he didn't so george's opponent missed weight for a catchweight fight like the catchweight was 180 pounds and anyone who knows anything about fighting or has been around fighting for a while knows that there is no allowance on a catchweight fight Allowances are only in non-championship fights in weight classes. Richard Kiley comes in at like 181.8. And then I hear him say, oh, if I, if I win with my my pants off, I should come, on, should come in at 181 and that'll be okay. And then Mizuli was like, yeah, that's fine. And like, I overheard this from like the other end of the room that the weigh-ins were in. I had to fucking like scuttle all the way over to be like... Because Harry is a crab. Because I am a crab. To be like, there's no allowance for catchweights. He's missed weight. And then Mazzuli, like, the cogs turn. He realises, oh, yeah, that is the rule. It's like, yeah, actually, yeah, you've missed weight. Well, that's very, very good because the rich, I mean, the, that car salesman was getting good money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got an extra $2,200 because this guy couldn't be asked to cut weight for an extra £1.2. What's, what's £1.2? Maybe a 10-inch pizza with a keep, lot of cheese on? Keep in mind... Richard Kiley, most of his fights were welterweights. <laughs> Other bizarre thing from Bellator is they were telling my coach, this was my second Bellator fight, the one in Italy, they were telling my coach I'm going to be fighting Charlie Leary. I spent about one or two weeks studying film on Charlie Leary, thinking, what am I going to do when I fight Charlie Leary? And then when I get the contract, it says you're fighting Nicolo Solli. Bizarreness. Oh, I saw their random drug test out random. Vegan Harry, when he made his Bellator debut, pasty, much less muscly than he is now Harry, pasty white Harry, didn't get any random drug test, but I went to the toilet before holding pads to corner him and all that. And it was just a big, muscly, explosive-looking guy getting watched taking a piss. Yeah, that's Bellator.